connected. There is no better way to see the world, in my opinion. When you're on a motorcycle, you're completely immersed in your surroundings. You feel everything and you smell everything. And you're just so much more connected to the environment that you're driving through. I, I couldn't imagine traveling any other way. I don't even remember when I started riding motorcycles. Honestly, I've loved everything with an engine since I was a little kid. If it had an engine and I didn't have to pedal, I, was, I wanted to be on it. And I got my first dirt bike. It was a YZ80, a two-stroke, and um, it just kind of progressed from there. Uh, when I was old enough to get my driver's license, I got a motorcycle shortly after. And it wasn't until I got out of college and moved to the state of Colorado, um, which is just nature's playground. There's mountains everywhere. And, um, a few other states are within driving distance, Utah and Wyoming. And I wanted a motorcycle that could comfortably take me for four or five hours a day. That's when I started touring the United States on a motorcycle. It had been a fantasy for me since I started driving motorcycles. I was always looking on the internet at pictures of motorcycles that were far away and these exotic places and there was just wasn't enough vacation time off with, with my job that I can pursue this. I'd always save up a chunk of my time off and I'd go on a big motorcycle trip. And I loved my job, I loved my career. Uh, on paper, everything was perfect. I was making pretty good money. I was putting money towards my retirement. My job offered me great medical benefits. Um, on paper, everything was perfect. I just was working more than 40 hours a week and I wasn't getting to ride my motorcycle enough. So I kind of proposed the idea of taking six months off unpaid. I had saved enough money um, since I'd been preparing. This, this fantasy turned into an obsession and in my line of work, you, you just can't have a vacancy. I worked for a government agency. The county can't uh, let you take six months off to go gallivanting on a motorcycle. And I thought about it for a little while and I was mentally prepared uh, to do this. And I informed him that I'd be resigning. It was something that I wanted to do. And life can disappear pretty damn quickly. And it doesn't matter how much money is in your checking account or your savings account. It doesn't matter how much uh, you have saved for retirement. So, and I, I was thinking about this constantly is, when my time comes, am I gonna have enough cool shit um, stored up here in my memory that I'm gonna be satisfied? And uh, the only way to do that for me personally was, um, to sell my things. I sold my truck, I sold a lot of my belongings, um, I quit my amazing job, and I packed my motorcycle, and I shipped it over uh, to London. And I started in London, and I traveled about 35,000 miles through Europe and Morocco and Africa. And my time was up in September, and I flew it back thinking that maybe I'd get a job 
and I was just so addicted to the traveling lifestyle, meeting new people and making new friends. I kept going. I, uh, I caught up with friends, I had a few cold beers with people, and uh, then I crossed the Mexican border and I've been southbound since. The hardest part is thinking about it. We are our own worst enemy. We think about all the what ifs. Like I said, I had this great job, and what if I don't get another great job? Uh, I worked so hard. I'd been in um, the aviation industry for six years, and it's what I went to college for. I was where I was supposed to be, and I kept thinking to myself, what if, how bad is this gonna look in the future? And job interviews is, this, this person went to just drive a motorcycle around the world and take pictures of things. That sounds pretty reckless. And I thought, what if something happens to my friends and my family? How am I going to get back home on time to be with them? You think about all the worst case scenarios. And it's good to think about that. It's good to mentally prepare for those situations. But the hardest part is to quit thinking about it and start doing it. As soon as you commit to yourself that this is what you want to do and this is what you're going to do and nobody's going to stop you, you will figure out how to make ends meet. Uh, another big fear was running out of funds. What happens if I'm broke and I'm in the middle of Guatemala? What the heck am I going to do? What if my bike's engine blows up? Now I go back home, I sold my vehicle, I don't have a job. You worry about all these things until you're on the road, until you take that leap of faith. Everything seems to fall in place, even, even when things are going bad. Um, all travelers go through it. Nothing goes perfectly. Even when things are going bad, everything will fall into place for you. You just need to make that leap. You need to make the commitment to yourself that you're doing what you want to do and everything's gonna work out. It always does. I miss people, definitely. It's, it's one of the, the hard parts of being away from home. Nobody in my family rides motorcycles. I'm the only one. And that's kind of what got me into photography is photography's a way that I can share my experiences with them. Otherwise, they couldn't relate in any way whatsoever to what I was doing. So they don't like the idea of two-wheel travel. Uh, because motorcycles are dangerous, but uh, they are supportive about me chasing my dreams down and checking out new continents and meeting new people and climbing up the side of volcanoes and watching magma shoot out of the earth. Uh, they're pretty excited for me to experience these things. So that, that makes it easier being away, uh, is having the support of my friends and family. How did I plan my journey? That's probably one of the more popular questions that I get is how I find dirt roads and scenic overlooks. For the most part, I'm pretty disorganized. Uh, the way that I plan my trip is just pinning locations on my Google Maps on my phone. Is um, I'll meet someone at the bar and they'll be like, hey, you gotta check out this pub. Well, I pin it on my phone. And then at that bar I meet someone who tells me about a scenic overlook and I pin that. And then either things that I've seen on the internet or read about on the internet or 60-70% of it is recommendations where people are like, hey you gotta go check out this road or something. And off I go on my motorcycle chasing down recommendations. There are some times that I get behind schedule and I have to do a six or seven hundred mile day, which is miserable on my butt. But um, if you start traveling, you will have amazing experiences. It's really easy. There's no denying that traveling takes money. It's hard to give advice on this. Number one, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not gonna pretend to be. Um, and my situation's not the same as everybody else's. What I did, I had this 
burning desire to travel and it's it's not new I didn't wake up one morning and decide to drive my motorcycle around the world um, I started saving my money four or five years ago and um, I hit the road with a lump of money and I sold my pickup truck um, I sold a lot of my furniture I, I sold different items that I wasn't going to need uh, on the road and really kind of simplified to down to what I can bungee cord onto my motorcycle and if you're careful about it you can stretch your money pretty far I don't live a fancy lifestyle I, I camp a lot uh, I stay in hostels um, one of the downsides of not being able to spend money is my traveling isn't like it's not a vacation as some people I don't get to do a lot of the expensive tourist attractions unfortunately I don't pull over on the side of the road with my motorcycle and go zip lining or snorkeling or go on a, a booze cruise in Italy. I just can't afford it. Uh, for me, my money is reserved for motorcycle parts, gasoline, lodging, and food. And okay, some of it goes towards beer, but money, belittle the fact that money is important, but I don't think it should be the reason why you don't pursue your dreams. If traveling is your dream, figure out a way. You can do it. One thing that I think is important to recognize, and, and I don't want to sound naive to the fact that not everyone can pick up and drive to South America or ship their motorcycle to Europe. Um, there's people that have commitments, and I totally respect um, honoring your responsibilities, and whether it's family issues or career, career we're all at different points in our life I think the theme of what I want people to learn from what I did is go do that one thing that you've wanted to do for so long so it's so easy trust me I was there it's so easy to find excuses and find reasons why you shouldn't do it and it's usually as I mentioned where we are our own worst enemies um, some of the fears are irrational um, because everything falls into place it always does and most of us have a support system of friends and family whether it's quitting your job and sending it huge and driving a motorcycle around the world or whether it's going and hiking that one mountain that's only an hour from your house or going camping at that one campground that you've wanted to go to but but you haven't made time for whether it's big or small, do it, because tomorrow, tomorrow isn't guaranteed, and uh, you're going to be kicking yourself if you don't get that done. The best part of travel is the people that I'm meeting, and some of my favorite experiences have been going through these countries and experiencing people that will give you the clothes off their back, and they don't even know you. They don't, they don't have money to give you, but they're willing to help you, they're willing to do anything. And I've experienced that in literally every country that I've gone through. And I think that's the best part of travel is, there's ups and downs of travel for sure. I've had some lows, I've had some miserable lows. I broke my foot in Greece and um, at the same time, my motorcycle wasn't working. Um, that was a pretty stressful time. And like I said, Everything falls into place. Um, things worked out, and I did some troubleshooting on the motorcycle and got that up and running. I let my foot rest for a while, and then I got that just bungee corded crutches to my motorcycle and kept going. And then there's days like tonight that are the absolute high. I, I don't know how else to describe it other than being high. It's the high of traveling is being on the road for so long and experiencing something I've never seen magma before. And tonight, after, let's not candy coat it, after a miserable day of pushing that motorcycle up a mountain, it took seven, eight of us? It took eight of us to get that motorcycle up here. And then, we get, we get up to here where the fire is and realize we have another hour and a half to push this motorcycle down a single track trail to get the picture. And then we pull it off. We, we get that long exposure photograph under the stars with 
magma shooting out of a volcano. And that, I mean, that's reason to keep going. There's so much ahead that I haven't seen yet that, that keeps me wanting to keep gas in the tank and get up every morning and go to a new destination. The other thing is photography. Um, social media has really changed the way that we can share our travels and see so many people uh, liking that and supporting me and commenting on it and I've gotten messages from people that have told me that I am their motivate that some of the pictures that I've taken are their desktop background on their computers at work and that reminds them that they're working to get to the weekend so that they can travel. And that also keeps me going. I want to keep taking photography. I want to get better at photography. I want to push the motorcycle to the edge of the earth to get that one photograph that nobody else has gotten. I think that we accomplished that tonight.